Let's take a simple plate. It's not remarkable, but it will help us understand something profound. When making mesh, we are interested in dividing the domain into smaller parts. We call them cells. The faces that encapsulate the domain are often referred to as patches or boundaries. Oftentimes, we are interested in making the mesh denser to better capture the changes in properties. We call this refinement of cells. Take this case for instance. We've divided this domain into four cells, each looking like this. What if I wanted to further refine the domain, but only wanted the cells to be denser in one of the quadrants of this plate? Well, let's see what that would look like, shall we? I have the four quadrants here. Each needs to be refined three times and two times, respectively, as can be seen in the image. This is base mesh. This is level 2 of refinement, that is, cells from the base mesh have been divided twice in the three directions. This is level 3 of refinement, that is, again, cells from the base mesh have been divided thrice in the three directions. In this video, I want to discuss the ways in which mesh is created in open form using snappy hex mesh. For our plate problem, this is how we define the geometry. In my case, I have taken an SDL file which contains just the surface data of how the plate looks like. Then I have four different refinement boxes as you can see. These cover the four quadrants of the plate so we can later implement levels of refinement on the plate. One of the most effective tools present along with Snappy Hex Mesh utility is Surface Feature Extract in open form. Here we take the feature edges, that is, edges that encapsulate the domain and help the meshing utility understand the bounds of the domain. This is done to ease up the identification process. Sharp edges need to be retained. The way in which it is defined is through the surface feature extract dict file as can be seen here. The included angle talks about identification of edges whose surface normals are less than this angle. So anything beyond 150 degrees will not be identified. This works great for most cases, but you need to be mindful for curved geometries. Coming back to the refinement boxes in the four quadrants, you can see we've given the four regions as boxes with something called mode inside. This ensures that mesh is made within this region and not beyond it. The levels here represent what we spoke about earlier, the division of cells with respect to the base mesh. All software packages have an enthusiastic feature that used to work before but isn't used later on. The first entry 1E15 is that entry, it's essentially ignored by OpenFoam. Coming to entries in snapping, we have some crucial entries here, namely the feature snapping and implicit feature snap. Both play a vital role in retaining the shape of the geometry and ensuring that mesh doesn't distort. Let's take a look at what our mesh looks like after running these settings. Looks neat, huh? The critical parameters for this particular case include these. Refinement box definition ranges from having different sizes of boxes to symmetric refinement as we saw in our case. We can refine a domain in form of boxes which is rectangular box with a point 1 which is extremity of the box and point 2 the other extremity of the box. We can do a cylinder too. This works great for peculiar cases where you want structured mesh, especially in cases like the IC engine near the valves. The way we define it is through similar entries, point 1, point 2 and a radius entry to define the radius of the cylinder. Let's complicate the geometry a bit. Let's make a hole in the middle of the plate and try to make prism layers around it. In this case, we are interested in making prism layers not just around the hole but also around the edges. The way the geometry is defined now is through different boundaries defined within the STL file itself. We have the hole, the top and bottom walls and side walls. 
Side walls are the four walls encapsulating the hole and top and bottom are the front and back facing walls. We are interested in capturing these features. The edges look something like this. You can see the hole has been captured. The surface feature extract deck file looks something like this, similar to what we saw earlier. Let's go through the steps of Snappy. First we have castellation. Then we have snapping and now we have layering. Something looks odd, doesn't it? Notice how near the corners of the domain the mesh looks distorted. Why is this happening? Well, it's because the mesh near the hole is pulling the cells closer to the hole, causing the other mesh cells to become distorted. Remember, layering process essentially pulls the cells closer to the boundary where layers are needed. Now let's make the layers around the side walls too. This looks interesting. Notice how the corners do not have the layers. Why did this happen? Well, one explanation is either I have done something wrong or that Snappy Hex Mesh is not capable of creating overlapping layers from different patches. It can make it well near the hole we made since the feature angle we provided was 360. Even if I were to change the feature angle and try creating the mesh, the mesh on the sides will not overlap. What can be done then? This is where CF Mesh comes in. It's a meshing utility present only in OpenFoam version 2112. It is a versatile tool that runs quite fast and creates decent mesh for certain cases. If you are planning on running CF Mesh, I would highly recommend you install OpenFoam version 2112 from the ESI or .com website. It is inbuilt in that particular version only. The only file required now is called MeshDict to be placed in the system folder. Imagine that, all that hard work you do with making block mesh, surface feature extract, then snappy hex mesh dict, all present in just one file with minimal entries here. In our case, we simply mention the maximum cell size, the boundary cell size, we ensure the mesh around the hole is kept at same value. Then we make 15 layers around the hole and the side walls. The mesh looks quite neat. It has made overlapping layers with some sacrifice near the hole. As you can see, the skewed elements that are present here. However, the mesh near the side walls is quite well made. It maintained the sizing that we wanted. You can see the comparison or rather the difference between the mesh made between Snappy Hex Mesh and CF Mesh. Now, I would leave this as an exercise to the viewer. The case setup files are available on my GitHub repository, link in the description. You can take both cases and work with them try to make the layers look same in snappy case if you can i would love to hear it if you succeeded in doing so in the next part i will talk about the mesh made for this burner geometry this contains intricate features such as dilution holes injection holes etc it also contains quite complex curved portions that require good surface capturing and we will discuss the differences that we find between again CF mesh and snappy X mesh. So until next time, thanks for watching.